Now let's review what we have talked about uh, in terms of the equilibrium uh, in the system where we have a box with a partition and n molecules are on the left and n prime molecules are on the right. Uh, so this partition is right in the middle, remember. Uh, so for a large number of uh, molecules, what we ordinarily find is that uh, the value of n is very close to its equilibrium value for most of the time. So uh, we notice that uh, we have fluctuations around the equilibrium value. So n is a function of uh, time. At the same time, if I take a time average of n over some time interval tau, I find that it's going to be close to the total number of molecules divided by 2, n over 2. And so we find that n is close to uh, capital N over 2, and I have capital N large uh, of the order of Avogadro's number, let's say. So here you can see this uh, in this plot for 40 molecules, this is a computer simulation, it's starting from a very rare situation where n is equal to 40, all the molecules are on the left hand side, and you can see that it uh, immediately starts relaxing to the average value, which is uh, 20. Okay, the other thing we have noted here is that the probability of n is equal to n1 which is much greater than n over 2 or much less than n over 2 is very rare so for probability of n molecules n of them are on the left hand side n equals n1 this is much greater than n over 2 or n equals n1 which is much less than n over 2 is very low And why is that? Because there are only a few configurations that correspond to this scenario. As the number n1 deviates from n over 2, capital N over 2, we have less and less configurations, a more ordered situation, and uh, therefore such events are very rare. Okay, so events like this where I have n1 much greater than n over 2, for example, I have this peak here at x and this peak here at y, uh, these are really, really rare events. Um, the other thing is, as n1 difference between n1 and n over 2 increases, uh, the likelihood of another large fluctuation that is following n equals n1 is much less likely. So what does that mean? Uh, the probability of observing this peak X was already very low. And right after the observance, uh, observation of this peak, the probability of observing another very large fluctuation like uh, Y, this peak at Y, position Y, uh, th this is e even less likely. So. Um, it was already very unlikely to observe a large fluctuation to start with and right after this fluctuation it is even even more likely unlikely to observe another very large fluctuation uh, we will see this that's because the probabilities of these two events um, are going to be multiplied in order to find the 
occurrence of an event right after the other if they are statistically independent. This will be uh, discussed uh, later on. Okay, now uh, I have prepared this system in one of these very rare situations. So for example, at the beginning I have all the molecules on the left and then I uh, let the system uh, undisturbed for some time. What will I observe? where I will observe that this large uh, fluctuation will uh, decay in time. So if I have an already very ordered situation, uh, a large fluctuation or a specially prepared um, very ordered configuration uh, will decay to its equilibrium value is expected to decay in time to capital N over 2 and this will be the case as as I wait longer and longer I will see this decay and what is special about uh, N equals capital N over 2 most uniform or random configuration so therefore this is expected to happen now if i measure the time it takes for it to decay to its equilibrium value capital n over two so let's take a look at uh, this peak here so there is a rarely occurring fluctuation this happened at time t1 and then i look at the time it takes for it to decay to its equilibrium value so that's this one so right here uh, that is time uh, t1 prime let's say uh, so what will i see here there is a time interval um, delta t uh, that's going to be the time required for this large fluctuation to decay to its equilibrium value so i'm going to call this time relaxation time all right so the time required delta t required uh, for a large fluctuation to decay to its equilibrium value decay to equilibrium value back to equilibrium value that is capital N over 2 is called the relaxation relaxation time all right so let me separate this statement from the rest of the text here okay so the time required for a large fluctuation to decay back to its equilibrium value capital n over 2 is called the relaxation time now what i want you to uh, notice here is that uh, whether i'm going uh, in positive time or negative time so let's say that uh, this system was observed at t is equal to minus 30 here uh, sometime uh, before my reference time so this is my reference time reference point uh, I see that the system was fluctuating uh, around its equilibrium value and then a very large fluctuation occurred. So here is the large fluctuation that occurred. So if I go back in time, uh, basically I see that uh, as I go into uh, t, t is equal to minus infinity, so t goes to minus infinity what do i observe uh, again this fluctuation decays back to its equilibrium value for example here it has reached its
its equilibrium value, so it's uh, decaying. Here it has reached its equilibrium value. And uh, when I go in the positive uh, time scale, so t goes to a positive infinity, now I see exactly the same fluctuation uh, decaying to its uh, equilibrium value. So what I find is that the behavior is symmetric in time and also it is symmetric in the um, sign of the fluctuation. Whether this is a positive fluctuation or a negative fluctuation, I get the same uh, response. So let me note that uh, here. Uh, so I find that for the value of n, t greater than my reference point t1, it's going to decay to capital N over 2 as t goes to uh, as t goes to positive infinity. At the same time for n t less than t1, it will go to n over 2 as t goes to minus infinity. So uh, here I can see the situation again. Uh, let's concentrate on this one and you can see that if I go in positive time or if I go in the negative time axis, negative time direction, I find that the behavior is the same. I always decay to the equilibrium value here and the equilibrium value here. The behavior is symmetric. Um, and also, the other thing I said is, um, so we have time, this is what we call time reversal symmetry. The behavior is symmetric in time. And now, if this is a negative fluctuation or a positive fluctuation, uh, the behavior is the same. So, um, I can have um, n equals to n1 that is uh, much less than capital N over 2, a large negative fluctuation so that um, n equals n1 minus uh, n over 2 would be negative. Uh, then I find that uh, the be expected behavior is the same. So whether this is a positive fluctuation or negative fluctuation, the behavior is the same. And this comes from the fact that the probability of n equals uh, n1 uh, much greater than n over 2 is the same as the probability of n equals n1 much less than n over 2. Both of these probabilities are uh, going to zero as n gets uh, very large. Uh, so I have a symmetric likelihood situation, therefore the behavior uh, with respect to the sign of the fluctuation will be symmetric as well. Okay, so let's summarize what we said. Uh, so if you have this box partition right in the middle, and remember I call um, small n the number of molecules on the left hand side n prime the number of molecules on the right hand side uh, the volumes are v over 2 v over 2 and i'm looking at what will happen to n in time if i leave the system undisturbed for a long time n goes to its uh, time averaged value capital n over 2 it's ordinarily very close to n over 2 
uh, the probability of having n deviating from n, capital N over 2 either in the positive direction or negative direction is very low such events are rare why are they rare because uh, they are ordered ordered situation uh, is very rare as the deviation from n over 2 increases as the amplitude of the fluctuation increases the likelihood of another la uh, large fluctuation uh, following the first fluctuation is much less likely that has to do with a statistical independence of the events which we will come back to if you have a large fluctuation it is expected to decay in time to its average value capital n over 2 with a time interval delta t which we call the relaxation time and uh, the configuration that is relaxing to is the most uniform or most uh, random configuration if you look at the time reversal symmetry so if you go in the positive time axis uh, this is going to plus infinity this is going to minus infinity we see a completely symmetric situation the fluctuation uh, is always expected to decay to its uh, average value whether we go in positive time axis or negative time axis that's what we call time reversal symmetry and also the behavior for uh, having a large positive fluctuation or uh, having a large negative fluctuation will be similar because the probability of having uh, the, a fluctuation which is uh, very large and positive and very large and negative they're almost the same uh, so the likelihood is the same therefore the behavior is very very similar so we have two types of symmetry here time reversal symmetry and uh, sign symmetry okay so fluctuation amplitude sign symmetry so two types of symmetries in the behavior of the system uh, when it is deviating from its equilibrium value for uh, by a large amount.